And we are live. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the XL Tribesman Podcast. Today, I have a very, very VIP guest. Um, <laughs> I'm just bullshit. It's just Corey, y'all. No, nah, I'm kidding. Um, today, I have uh, Corey Thomas, a.k.a. CQ Smooth, if you're following him on IG. Uh, you probably seen his pictures because they literally went viral all around the internet. I'm gonna say twice, if not three times, you went viral um, from you know some some infamous photos at this point. But you had a whole life, you had a whole story before those photos ever came out. And so the entire premise of my podcast is really to get into the story of like how you became a model. So that we can even be discussing those infamous photos. Because you had a whole story before that. So, uh, first of all, introduce yourself. Tell the people where you're from. And let's get into it. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. Again, my name is uh, Corey Thomas. Uh, Chicago native, born and raised. Um, okay, Chi-Town. Stay so six, four, four. Um, But, yeah, modeling was not something i expected to get into um the plan was oh really yeah the plan was to get into acting so um as you can see from my my build i'm an athlete uh play college football but oddly enough i was trying to go from college football get into the nfl a little bit just to save up enough money to pursue acting without worrying about being like one of these starving artists so that was the game plan as unique as that sounds because people oh you're not like mm. football players like nah football just kind of like paid for things for me you know i don't watch it or nothing like that um so the nfl didn't work out it's not crazy i mean athletes go to being actors all the time i feel like once you either decide you want to be done or you get an injury either one or the two that's the next progression you either become an athlete or a sports commentator or just Full on entrepreneur, but that's that's the I mean that's the I don't want to say the goal, but it it always seems to be the pathway. So no, that doesn't seem strange at all. Yeah, so I agree. I think the only reason why I saw it as strange is because that was my one goal. Like I want to go here just to get into this, compared to somebody who goes to that. Oh, I got it. it. That was your end goal in mind. Yeah, to begin with, not what happened along the way. Got it. Yeah, so that's how that happened, and then obviously it didn't work out, which was which was fine. Um, but I have. And I always brag about this all the time. I have the biggest support group in the world, whether it's like my friends or my family or like my, or everybody's just one big connected web for me as far as what I need and to push me forward. So um, okay. my friend group, they were auditions. Like, hey, go to this, try this, go to this, sign up for this. Eight. And I don't know if I was like mentally just like down in the dumps or I was like already defeated. It. Um, but I was just shut it all down. I was like, no, I'm not going to go or no, I'm not interested in that. I don't want to do this. And then um, Shaq had this competition with Wilhelmina uh, and JC Penney's. They were looking for like big and tall models. So, that yes, I remember that very distinctly. Right. Now, what I did not know, well, I knew this from when I met you in Houston, but before that, I did not know you were there. I knew all the people there, I just didn't know you yet. Yeah, so I was there yes. um, trying to trying to figure out what's going on because everything was just so crazy to me um, because I wasn't going to go to that too. But my friend, um, Javar, he was like, you know, bro, we keep sending you stuff and we keep trying to push you. You said this is what you want to do and you haven't done it yet. So I was like, you know. Mm. Come on, come on, good friend. You know, because if, if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't have did it. I, I would have just been another thing I shut down. So, you know, I got a plane ticket, went to Texas, um, I think that was like my first time being. Oh, you weren't even in Texas. Oh, I was in Chicago. Come on, dedication. Yeah, so I found like a little nice little Airbnb, that was close. Uh, got a rental car, and then um, and I, think I told you this when I was in Houston. I pulled up, and I actually met Brandon. Brandon was in the parking lot, um, and I saw yes, make a sci-fi license plate. So I felt a little better. All right, so now we but we get there, and he has a folder. Of pictures, portfolio, and I don't have anything. I just thought we were just supposed to show up and talk to these people. Model. Oh, you went in there empty-handed. Empty-handed. And I had a piece of my name. I was just I just walked in. Um and we 
door and it's a million ball black dude. I'm like, well, this is this pointless. I'm not gonna count <laughs> everybody. Um, but as the line was progressing, this guy was um on the side. So he's like, hey, you guys don't know your measurement, I'll measure you. Uh, no problem. So I didn't know what a chest or butt insane. You know, so I came out and said, Can you please help me out? I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so while he's measuring me, he's like, um, he has these really fancy shoes on. And I was like, Hey, you got some really nice uh shoes, sir. Like they look really good on you. And he's like, you know what, I appreciate that. Um they're from Nordstrom, but don't tell anybody because I'm not supposed to be wearing Nordstrom because I'm a national recruiter uh, for J.C. Penney. Somehow this guy's important. And so he's like, I'll tell you this. If this competition doesn't work out for you, if you lose, here's my card. I still think J.C. Penney can use a guy like you. So I'm like, all right, bet. So naturally. Look at that. See, you never know what being nice gets you. And the crazy thing is, especially now that I am a model and I see so many of these models who are like, stuck up or arrogant or obnoxious it's like it's, it's free of charge to just be nice to people you know so it goes along it costs zero dollars and zero cents and that's it so i lost the competition and then i emailed the guy um he didn't respond back and then so i like, gave up i was like, all right well i tried and then i don't know i think i was just sitting in my room like like a few weeks later and i was like nah i'm gonna email him again so i emailed him again didn't hear nothing back i was that's cool and then i was like every day then so every day Hey, it's me. Hey, it's me. The guy who said somebody's about the shoes. It's me. It's me. Like, yeah, I wouldn't. No, nah, I kept emailing him. And then he finally responded. Persistent. Yeah, you have to be. I was like, you know, I, I have nothing else to lose. I play pay for this plane ticket. I was working at Best Buy at the time. So that, that plane ticket was expensive to me at the time. So, um. Come on, my favorite store in the world. Hey, I still got my Best Buy card maxed out. But, um, uh, he was like. Me too, don't tell nobody, though. <laughs> I remember you, but I can't work with you directly. Um, you have to go to an agency. I think your I think your phone is leaning. slowly. Yeah, I see it too. Slowly, I, I was about to say I'm seeing more of the ceiling and less of you. <laughs> I don't know if it was the energy, but I was like, it's slowly getting down too. Oh, your phone felt that energy. That's what it is. Your phone felt that pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he sent me to Kim Dawson. So they were in Dallas, and he's like, you know, I already talked to him. I already let him know who you are. Just go. So I'm like, okay, so now I got to go back to Dallas. So I booked the flight, went back out there. Um, <laughs> and so they was like, okay, you know, we're going to just take a couple headshots. Um, so just make some poses. So I was like, okay, so I stood straight. And they was like, all right, give us some more poses. So at this point, I'm just like, like, I, I don't know what y'all. You did not hit up with the peace. <laughs> peace sign. I was just like, y'all got to help me. And so this dude in the back office, he saw me like screwing up and he's like oh my god no come here when she says give us different poses she literally just means just shift your weight so he just we're just literally just shift your weight shift your weight i'm like okay just shift on the left yeah so they take a couple pictures and i think before i even got back on the plane they was like you know what uh i think we want to sign you and i, I probably irritated my agent because i actually like four times i was like i said you want to like sign me and she was like yeah i was like so like i'll be a model she was like, yeah. I said, no, no, no. So, like, once I sign this contract, I'm officially, like, a model? And she was like, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, all right, bet. So, um, I signed the contract, and I feel like this is in March of, I want to say, 2019. And so, I made, like, this. Okay. Yeah. So, I made, like, this big, huge post on Instagram. Like, everybody, I'm a model. You know, I'm excited. Everybody's, oh, congratulations. And then I don't hear nothing from my agency for months. I'm like, oh, my God, I made this big announcement. I done told all these people I'm officially a model, and I'm just on the roster. And I think I was it was August of that year. Come on, they have my friend sitting on the oh, bench. No, I said, man, I'm going to delete this post. I hope nobody might see this. I, <laughs> I, said, I said, I just shot the gun too early. Um, so she reached out in August, I believe, and she was like, hey, um, Nike is interested. They're doing, like, the big and tall thing now. Um, for guys, she's like, are you available? I was like, I don't even know why you were asking me that. Yes, I'm available. Book the flight. And so that was my first modeling gig was Nike. And I, according to Nike, what they told me, I am their first big and tall male. Um, so that was a huge. Oh, wow. Now that I did not know. Yeah. So that was a huge thing for me. Cause even when I got there, 
oh my gosh, when I got there, I screwed up twice. Well, one big time. So as you can see, I played for NIU um, and we were sponsored by Adidas for five years. I see. I, I see. I wear so much NIU gear because it's free and I've been used to wearing it that I don't notice that it's Adidas. So what do I do when I go into Nike in an all Adidas outfit without realizing I'm wearing Adidas at, at Nike, which is like a huge no-no. Got an Adidas bag with my clothes in it. And I get to the front desk and the security guard, he's like, oh my God, you're so brave. I was like, because I'm like a plus size model or like, what do you mean? And then now he looked me in my eye, he looked at the bag and it said Adidas. I said, oh my God. I said, can you put this behind the desk? He's like, no, he's like, no. It, it was like bringing like a bomb to the airport. I was like, oh my, I threw my bag outside the door. And people were walking by because the doors are glass. People were walking by like covering their mouths and like pointing at the Adidas bag. Like, who's is that? And I'm just like, man, I will never get another opportunity with Nike again. I just blew it. Um, but I'm, oh my God. So I met a guy um, in there and I said, bro, please. He's another young black guy. So I kind of felt comfortable. I said, bro, please help me. Give me some duct tape. And he looked down. He said, oh man, he said, I got you. So I duct taped everything that showed Adidas. And then I got to the actual set and it was like deja vu. They was like, okay, mix up the moves. Again, all I know at this point is left, right, because it's like left, right, shifting your way. Right. It's like, this is what I just learned. So I'm using this. You gave me an idea. You just gave me an idea for a whole course that I'm going to do. Thanks. Left and right course. This is what... No, I, I want to do a, like an actual posing course. I think that'd be a good course because starting out, you know, I think a lot of models pose wrong where they don't have the right pose, but or they go off what they see. And that's really what I had to do for my first few photo shoots. I would watch the other models before me pose and I would and I would ask them. And fortunately enough, they were nice enough to um, help me out. Like, hey, bro, like it's your first time. You're doing good. This is how I do it. Or just watch me. So I think the first models I met, uh, their names is uh, Azure, Dustin and Josh. And they were like pretty big in their careers at the time too and they were still like humble enough josh felix no i got josh okay asian i got it i don't remember his last name but not oh okay okay he's asian no that's not the same josh. <laughs> not okay. the same josh um no but even with my first time you know modeling i was able to meet really nice people but i was all that's good yeah but because you, you 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 a lot of times you find like i hear stories about you know when you come into this industry people are like side-eyeing you not wanting to help you. So it's really great that you had did not have that story. Like people were embracing you. They were willing to help you. They were willing to, they see that you, you have talent. You just needed to be like directed in the right direction. They were like, I'll do it. Yeah. I love that. I absolutely love that. That's what I want more of and, because nobody has nothing to lose by helping you. And, and that's what it comes down to with this modeling, because there's been times where like they were helpful to me, but they were also regular models right i'm big and tall it's also been times where like i've reached out to big and tall models for help and they kind of like nah you kind of got to get it on your own like i did and it was like sometimes it's like that's crazy to me because I, you might see me as competition but you have to have enough confidence in yourself as a model and realize there's enough money to be made for everybody so when any Oof. yeah so anytime somebody asks me even if it's a stranger who dms me like hey i see your model what can i do to get into it Nine times out of 10, they would not take your information and use it, right? It just goes in one in and out the other. But I still try to make sure I give it every time because I know what it feels like for somebody to be like, nah, figure it out, you know? And it kind of sucks. You know, I, I think people don't understand that the whole purpose of you getting it out the mud is so that no one else has to get it out of the mud. It's so that the next person, it can already be on the table for them. Right. That's the purpose of getting it out the mud. Not so somebody else got to come get it out the mud too. Like it's not I don't at that point. I mean, if if, if I can help you out, uh, especially the the way I'm built, sometimes I'm more athletic wear or something like that. And somebody may be big and tall, but they're a little bit more fluffier, which is fine. Even if you were my type, and I was like, man, this guy could be competition. It's not like I'm just going to just cut you off completely. Yeah, man, these are my struggles. These are my accomplishments. This is what I did. You probably should try to avoid this. I mean, it, again, it doesn't hurt. Or it doesn't cost to help people. Sometimes it isn't because what's for you is for you. Exactly. And crazy enough, 
I think, you, well, Cam, Cam kind of enforced that idea in my head, too, because Cam kind of goes out the way. Um, for those who don't know, Cam is another big and tall model. He kind of goes out his way to help people or give people opportunities as well. And I even asked him, like, bro, don't you, like, aren't you afraid that that's competition? And he said the same thing. Like, what's for me is for me. It's enough money to be made for everybody. So I was like, you're right. That's exactly correct. So you are you are in um, Nike doing your first opportunity. Um, so I know a lot of times for models, right? I know a lot of times y'all take photos and sometimes y'all never see them. Like, because where they're being used is not somewhere you you know where it is. Or so, first of all, did you ever see the photos? And then if so, where was the first time you saw them? Um, so with Nike, I didn't really understand how long it took for, you know, for you to take a day. You might take a picture right now and it could be for yes. the winter time, right? So you wouldn't see. Them. Yes. So they wouldn't give me any updates or any expectations. I was literally checking the website like four times a week. And then the, the funny thing about it, and I kind of make this joke all the time, is like when you go on a Nike website, it's different now. Now, if you go to Big and Tall, like you'll see me front and center sometimes. But during that time, I was like an unlockable character. So like you'll see like some little small guy in like t-shirt and then you would have to go to size and hit 3X and then like I pop up. So yeah. now I have to like, man, you remember like, okay, so what outfit was I wearing? And then I have to go find an outfit and then hit the unlock me button and be like, okay, here I am, screenshot, and then post it to Instagram. So that what's the unlock me button? What's that? Well, that was just my joke because, like I said, you. Oh, <laughs> I just. <laughs> oh God, I just got it. When you go to the outfit and you hit the three X, you unlock yourself. <laughs> Small skinny white guy, then you hit it, and then it's just me. And it's just like, oh, no, I, I, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> oh my god, y'all. Yeah. If y'all don't know, Corey is funny. <laughs> like, oh my god, my stomach hurt from from the Houston. <laughs> just so y'all, yeah. it was a fun experience surfing the web, and, <sighs> like trying my pictures. But like when it was Coles. It, it was kind of different because a lot of people, you know, shop for codes in like magazines and things like that. So I think that's what kind of started people like, oh, I know you. This this is Corey. This is like Father's Day sale, you know, and it's like, okay, so this is Corey. So now that I'm working more, they start to see me more. Like, oh, I was just shopping mm -hmm. on the app and, you know, I seen you or like, good job, bro. You know, you know, I, you really are showing us how to do it as a, as a bigger model. You're giving us the confidence to do it. So it feels really good when, like, your family or friends, you know, see you on websites as they just browse or they're just in a store and just be like, oh, that's my friend Corey, and they'll send it to me. And I'll be like, oh, that's kind of dope. So it, that that's, like, a really fun experience as far as, like, modeling goes. It really is. I mean, <clears throat> I, too, feel the same joy uh, when I walk into my favorite store and I see my people modeling. I feels it feels a sense i i feel i feel like i've also won uh when i see y'all in the stores or when i see y'all and it's it's the 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 most the i think i don't know what it is about it i don't know if there's still a shock around it but the most intriguing part to me is like when you show up randomly in the email i don't know why that's the most intriguing part because you're not expecting to see people you know and then when you do it's like like when i saw you on the um um when i i saw you on the nike email once and i was just like oh shit this that's Corey. i don't know why it has that effect but it does yeah. and i think and i think every time i see it i think to myself how many young guys are opening their email right now, seeing themselves for the first time? Every single time, there's going to be a first time someone seeing themselves. And I just think about, I just think about how far we've come and how much more we got to go. Right. And I'm thankful for where we at, but I know we got work to do. And so I appreciate that. I appreciate these brands for finally starting to embrace us as, as, as as viable customer options like 
we're, we've been worth it, but I'm glad y'all finally seeing it. Thank you. Um, so, all right. So we at Nike, we did our thing. What's your next, what's your next shoot? Like, what does that look like for you? Cause now you've gotten a little bit of, you know, you got some help. So what's your next shoot like? So the next shoot was, I think it was Nike again. They had brought me back out. Oh, yeah. oh, Nike said you did so good. We want you back, and I was honored. I said, bring me back out. Um, and you, you didn't, you didn't win no Adidas this time, did yeah, you? No, no Adidas, no Adidas, none of. Them. Okay, good, good, good. I can find, and they were getting more comfortable too because they would recognize me. Because the first time, you know, everybody was like, "Are you security? Are you?" I was like, "No, nah, I'm, I'm the, the model." They's like, "Really? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the model. I'm not security." Um, <laughs> the security guards have shirts that say security. Um. But it was it was more confident. You could be plain clothes security, huh? You could be plain clothes security. Yeah, that's true. I get you. I mean, I'm used to it. Anytime I wear black, people just think I'm security. I mean, that just comes with the territory. Um, but it it was definitely a lot easier. Uh, Nike has a really chill environment. They make you feel at home. Um, I remember one time I was getting my beard trimmed a little bit, and the guy, I guess, he wanted to trim it down some more. And like one of the head women like came downstairs. She's like, "What are you doing to his beard?" And she was like, "Do you like your beard that low?" And I was like, "Honestly, I kind of like it how I am." But since I'm new, I'm like, "Whatever makes you guys happy." She's like, "No, we want you exactly how you are." She's like, "Don't touch it, like leave it alone." So at that point, I'm comfortable with Nike, and I'm starting to feel good. The poses are getting better. I'm still watching. okay. Yeah, and then after that, that's when I went to Coles, and it was like I had to start over because Coles is more. They have a different environment. Yeah. So, like, when Nike is just, like, give us, like, fierce, give us athletic, give us strong, Coles is, like, give us smiles, right? We want more smiles. So, for... for Ooh. Right. So, for a time, I would go back and forth from Coles to Nike or Nike to Coles, and I have to, like, reteach myself. So, I go to Nike, and I'll smile, and they're like, no smiles for this. I'm like, oh, crap, I forgot. And then I go to Coles, and I'm frowning. They're like, you know, less intimidating, more happy. I'm like, okay. So now... <laughs> <laughs> right i get it because every company has a different culture that they want to express through their photos so having to learn and unlearn that every time you get on the shoot yeah, yeah, yeah. i could see that, that was different and then i went to columbia well oregon for columbia and that was just different than both i'm thinking i'm gonna be in some setting some room man Kurt, we drove out to the redwood yes columbia does on set and i that's my favorite shoot my favorite shoot is on location. Really? It, yes, I love on location shoots. It, it was a fun experience. My favorite thing to do. I just wasn't ready for it. I, I said, oh, we really hiking and, and jumping across like rocks and, and ponds and stuff like that. And there's spiders and, and bugs out here. So they was like, yeah. And this is like for lunch, mm -hmm, yeah. handmade sandwiches and stuff like that. I said, oh, this is. This is the real earthy vibe. I said, okay. So this oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, Columbia gets in the mud. Yeah, they I love it. Literally. So, yeah. So that was a whole new experience for me, too. So um, at that point, you know, I was just very grateful. And then, like, the pandemic hit. And then I didn't model, like, that entire year. So I'm just like, well, that goes, like, my career. And then it slowly started to pick back up in 2021. And towards mm -hmm. the second half of 2021 and the first half of of this year has just been like huge for me. So like with Fenty and things like that, just really getting into me being like a model. And this is just not like something I'll do occasionally, like taking it serious, like as a model. So it's okay. Wonderful. All right. So now that we've made our way into Fenty, uh, <laughs> so I want to know now there's an infamous shoot, but before we get to the infamous shoot, I want to know, was that your first time with them? When I did that? Yes. Oh, oh, so this is on, this is on first shoot. This is, they got you. This is the first shoot. Okay. So what I want to know, right? I want to go all the way back. So agent calls you, says, we got an opportunity from Fenty. What you thinking? Go. I said, why are you talking to me? Book it. It's Fenty. So right. my mindset. So I, if I'm not mistaken, she had her runway show and I was in the running to be one of the people in it. So I was, I was really excited. Um, and then I didn't make it. And then they okay. booked me for a shoot. They had me on hold and then they canceled or they went with another model. Um, so at this point, I'm just, man, Fenty keep playing with me. They keep playing with me, but I know it's going to happen. 
So then my agent came back and she was like, Fenty wants you. And it's like, it's official. Like, we're ready to like confirm it. So I'm like, man, confirm it. And, and so she's like, let me just send you a couple proofs and just let me know if you're comfortable with it. And now, that th- see, that would have set off my first red flag. Because why, why, you, why, I, I don't know of any brand that sends proof. So why they did that, it would have been like, hold up now, what y'all trying to do? I think I was so, I guess, stargazed or mesmerized that it was like Rihanna and Fenty. And, yeah. and I've been on the site before, you know, I've, I've seen the boxers and stuff like that. So like when she was like, I was like, man, I don't need that. Like, I, I don't mind wearing like silky boxers and stuff like that. Like, right. It's Rihanna. So I, I get there, and the very first outfit is the harness. And so I looked at it for a while, and I was just like, I said, oh, I said, oh, Fenty, Fenty getting spicy. I said, this is spicy. And she's like, uh. Yes, I mean, it's, uh, that harness was spicy. Yeah, it was. So she, my, the lady, was, she was there, the stylist, she was like, do you need help getting in? I was like. 1000 percent yes yes i do need help getting into i don't know what this is and so the harness got put on um and everybody on set was cool everybody was friendly they make me feel real comfortable but like with me not being somebody who's really showing my body like that you know i'm like tiptoeing out like with like the boys covered and stuff like that and you know it, it gets to the point it was like wait so at um when you model for the other brands you are you're always fully clothed Yes, except for lately, as of late, I've been doing a lot of shirtless for like Nike, but because I had already kind of built that confidence and like been through the fire doing like the Fenty thing, I was more confident doing it for Nike. So I think if Nike asked before Fenty, I don't know if I would have been comfortable, right? They, I got it. Kind of got pushed into the fire and had to make myself comfortable. Um, I mean, yeah, that's kind of what happened. So at this point, I mean, yeah. So it, I mean, yeah, I'm, you can do I, anything at this point. At this point, because like even even like I told you, like sometimes I, I I deal with like body dysmorphia, and it's an everyday battle. You know, loving yourself, having the confidence. You know, sometimes I feel like I look great. Ten seconds later, I'm like, man, you look terrible, right? And it's just a mental thing you have to fight. So when I'm in the harness, I'm like, man, this is about to get out. You know, I'm a Q, the guy's going to see it, my family going to see it, you know, my family old school. And then all I told myself was like, man, it's Rihanna, it's Fenty. And then, you know, it's, it's, it, this is a gig, this is me moving to the next level um, as a model. This is going to give me the exposure that I wanted, this is going to give me the confidence that I needed. So I did it. So after the harness, after I kind of like put my hands down, they kept like, put your hands down, you know, like, just be comfortable. Wait, you was you was you was doing one of these like, numbers? I was definitely coming out like this and coming out like and, and then like some of the stuff was like my, my cheeks was out, right? So when I had to turn around, I kept looking back like they was like, just look forward. I was just like, man, all right. But like by lunch, I was like, you know what? You know, I'm in it, let's do it. So I got my confidence back and it was just like a good So this shoot is all these shoots are I just wanna get I just want the audience to get a understanding. See, what they don't understand in modeling is you don't just show up and take one picture and go home. No. Like, you're there for hours and hours and hours and hours. Yeah. So sometimes... And you got to look like you just got there every shot. And a lot of it is on the people on set. Um, depending on the vibe that they're bringing, the photographer, his energy, the music, and, of course, you as the model. So you have to make it fun right you have to remember why you're here you know just the experience of you know it's not too many opportunities where people are paying you the money that we getting paid to to take pictures of you right so you just have to Mm -hmm. embrace it and and enjoy the grind right so i after the pictures after i left same thing with my first shoot with nike i was checking like every three weeks i said man it's dropping soon i said as long as like my like my aunts my uncles you know they don't see it you know i'll be good so I think maybe it was like November or something like that. I'm not sure. I got a DM on Facebook at like two in the morning from some girl like I didn't even know. She's like, is this you? I said, okay. It, it dropped. It's time. So, God damn. Yeah. So after that, that's when it went viral on Twitter. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And then, so I have a, uh, a, a friend who's, uh, who's gay that I used to work with. He's like, Corey, you are the talk of the town in my group message. I said, what you talking about? And that's when he sent me the link to the Twitter. And that's how I knew. I said, oh, it's going crazy on Twitter. 
You were the talk of the town in a lot of group messages. I'll say that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. And, um, and that's another thing, like, as a, as a model and, you know, like, Happy Pride Month, of course, to all of, like, my followers who support me who are, you know, in that community. Um, a lot of my friends, they was like, well, how do you feel when, like, guys were saying that about you or something like that? And I, and I will say, like, when I first started out as a model, I was like, man, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, I will say, I was like, man, it's kind of weird or it's just not something I'm used to. Like, but years later and like who I am now, it's like, man, a compliment is a compliment. You know, they're just showing support. They're just showing love. You know, some of the, some of the comments were, you know, a little spicy, but I mean, it is what it is. But for the most part, <sighs> for the most part, it's support. You know, I hate that part. We talked about that. I hate that part. But, but... but it, it is what it is. I appreciate, you know, the support and the love. And, you know, a lot of the guys are saying like, you know, I never would have had the confidence to like order that but I just ordered it or something like that. Or like, you know, I appreciate you for taking um, the effort to, to, you know, take that step for a lot of us bigger guys. And I was like, you know, well, that makes me feel good. Um, some guys like, I just ordered it because you had it on. You want to see? I was like, no, nah, I don't want to see, but you know, I'm glad you had the confidence. You know what I'm like? I, but <laughs> so it just comes to like maneuvering and, you know, learning how to like speak to your audience and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You want to see? <laughs> that's that's gonna be the name. This gonna be the title of this episode. You want to see? <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, no. I mean, I too appreciate. Honestly speaking, I too, I, I too appreciate the step um, that you took. Although I know, like, I know what it came with. You know, like personally, and what it came like all the you know, in your personal life, but I do appreciate the step publicly because I mean, I too would never have worn any, I mean, I don't know if I still would actually, well, the box. maybe if I was getting spicy with somebody, but like personally, but like, I would never buy that though. Like that would have to be something that like my partner would be like, he wants me to wear and then I would wear, but like, that's not something I would off the top of purchase on my own validity. But I do, but that's the step that I appreciate that I even thought about it because those things aren't new. By the way, for the audience out there who are like not familiar with, you know, fashion, nothing Corey was wearing is new. That's been around since the 70s. So it's just my being put out to mainstream culture, but none of that's new. Just like people wearing Hoochie Daddy shorts, Gay's been wearing that forever, but you know. Now everybody's wearing it. It's it's a thing now, but we've been wearing that shit. I've been wearing those shorts all my life. So, whatever. But, so, what I want to know, okay, the spicy picture comes out. You know, you're getting, like, literally, you went viral three different times. From now, I learned the one shoot, but because she dropped them at different times, you kept going viral every time a new spicy one would come out. Yeah, it was on a Wendy Williams So, like, oh. Say that again? It was on a Wendy Williams show, too. That's when I was really like, oh, my goodness. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I did not know you made it to the WW show. Yeah. Okay. And they put, like, a little black box, like, right there, but they made, like, the black That's how you know. But they made it kind of long, though, so I was like, I appreciate that. Shout out to them for, you know. Helping the brother out with the with the long, but no, nah, I'm joking. But um, I'm joking. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was. Sir, this is a this is a G rated show. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm fucking with you. But um, so making it so that that is literally the exposure that you know, for better or worse, unfortunately, unfortunately, the way it works in our industry, all press is good press, even if it's bad press, honestly, and so even though that's what you went viral for, but that still helps your career. So what I want to know is like, what's some, what's some highlights that have came out of that, you know, notoriety from doing those spicy photos? Like what's something that you're like, I mean, I, your Instagram blew up. I knew that. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. I gained like four or 5,000 followers um, over time. It was just like rapid. And I was very grateful for that because like, I always wanted to get to the point where eventually my Instagram can be something uh, maybe lucrative for me. Right. So working with brands and things like that. So that kind of definitely gave me. Come on. You better, you better burn the candle at both ends. You, know, you better man. get both these checks. I am. But so that, that boosted it for sure. Um, and then I believe, 
uh, I ended up working with another company and they said they kind of, you know, found me through what they saw on the 50 site. So it's like, look at that. Oh, I, I need it. Um, and I'm working with new clients and it also made me a lot tougher because like some of those outfits, like I said, with me being like a Q, you know, like it being in the group chats, you know, me having to, to argue with certain people or like defend myself with certain people or family members or even like the negative comments, right? Because people aren't used to seeing like big guys in lingerie. They're not. Even male lingerie as a thing isn't really, I guess, that popular, right? So it was a lot of positive, you know, feedback from, you know, you know, male men, women, whoever. But it was also a lot of negative too. Like, you know, why would he wear that? Or he looks like this. And it's one thing to see it from strangers, but it's another thing to hear it from like friends and family. So yeah, I kind of appreciated that too because it made me tougher, right? I can't expect to be as big as I want and I can't take you know, criticism or people being like mean. Cause man, I, Kirk, one time this lady made a comment and I saw it and I was about to add her and me and her was about to get into it. And I was like, you know what? Like what, what would be even the point of like doing something stupid like that? Especially with me trying to build a brand and a name for myself. Why would I be going back and forth with like a complete stranger? This is stupid. So it definitely gave me thicker skin. And, and at the end of the day, the family that mattered and the friends that mattered, 100% supportive, you know what I'm saying? I, and I truly appreciate them for that because, again, you know, there's people that there's, there's, you know, taking these pictures just to post it or just to have it. But it's like, man, I, I got paid for this, man. Like, this is my job. This shows the progression of me, you know, as a model. So hopefully it leads to maybe me being on the runway for her this year. I know I just did a campaign with her, with Fenty, uh, and at the end of March. And I think that drops in August. So that was really huge. And I was really excited about that. So the work has been coming for sure. So that was a huge point, turning point in my career. So I was very I'm excited. Yeah. I'm I'm excited. I feel like <clears throat> I feel like one thing it does is set the bar that you can do anything personally. And then what it sets the bar is is that we as big and tall men can do anything. Because I think the most jarring part about it. It wasn't even that, I mean, at least for me, I must speak to me personally. The most jarring part about it wasn't even that you were a straight male. The most jarring part about it is that you were a big guy doing it. I think that's what it was for people. So yeah. now, because you literally like, you you shook up, you shook shit up. So now when the next person comes along and does something else, you know, showing our bodies, it won't be as, <gasps> right. It won't be like that because it'll be like, Oh, it's just a, a guy modeling. So I really appreciate you taking the, um, the crawling so that we can walk and, and the, the next people can run. Um, okay. So now, well, we already got into the spicy photo. So y'all know about the spicy photo. So now, what I want to know, and you already told the story about it. So what I want to know is, is there any photo, you don't have to say the brand, but is there any photo from any brand you ever took that you're just like, I hope that never comes out because I look terrible. Not And not because you're like self-loathing yourself because it's actually like, oh, if the world see this shit, I don't know what I would do. You know what? I think with all the brands that I've worked with, man, it's been at least one. Now, I think with the with the Fenty part, it was more because, like, I'm more naked than anything. So some of those features, just like you said, is me just being a critic. But even then, like, it's, it's certain websites, and I'm not going to say, you know, which brand because I don't want y'all looking. Uh, but it's like, man, why did they use that picture? You know, like, I've, I've screened mm -hmm. myself. It's like I'm in the process of like smiling, but I'm not. So it looks awkward. And then it's just like up there, like on a website, it's just like, man, like, why is this up here? Who, who dropped the ball <laughs> on this picture? But again, like when you're your biggest critic, sometimes you, you, Oh, I get it. Yeah. So sometimes you could just be, so you know what I do with those things when I'm overly critical, I sit on them and I make it a mission of mine to go back to it. Um, I'm going to say three to six months later. Oh yeah. And when I'm in a different mindset and I'll look at it again, I find that every time, and this is like personally, like my own personal photos. And this is also the photos that I take. I go back to look at old photos all the time. 
and I'll find photos that I thought were just trash that I absolutely love. And I, what I came to love about them was the same thing I hated. It was the imperfection. So it might have been the half smile. It might have been like you moving your hand, but the hand is blurry. But I don't know now I'm seeing it more artistically and less like less critically. So give, give it some time. Go back to look at it next year and see how you feel about yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to go back next year. Yeah. A couple more, a couple more months. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're going to get into my, um, my I have an icebreaker game I like to play. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, when was the last time you felt lit up inside? Like you were excited, you were motivated, you were like ready to take on your dreams. Because your ultimate dream, don't forget, is acting. Right. So when was the last time you felt lit up? Um... It was actually, I want to say, two and a half weeks ago. Um, I had got this call from this agency in Chicago because none of my agencies are here. They're in um, Texas, Los Angeles, Seattle. Um, so they were like, hey, we're not just like a model agency. We're a talent agency. Um, because the thing about getting into acting, your agency typically wants you to be where they are. So if they get you a gig, you should be able to get there fast. So that's been like, the roadblock for me. So this agency was in Chicago and I went out and I met them, you know, they asked me some questions and the vibe was just really good. They were liking me. I were liking them. Um, and you know, they asked for pictures. They asked me to read scripts and, you know, just seeing the look on their faces that I'm reading or, you know, the feedback they're giving each other that really made me feel good. I was very excited, um, to be able to do that or at least okay. dip my toe into the acting field. Because I, I think, like you said, the ultimate goal is that, but I've been so focused on trying to grow as a model that is like the acting part has took such a uh, so far back in the back seat that this has been like my main focus. So that was like that got me hyped back up to really get back into it and figure out how to, you know, attack acting aggressively. So I was really excited. about. It. You know what I think about dreams? I think about dreams this way. Right. And I learned this from Tyler Perry. You have to water one plant with your gallon of water until that one plant bears fruit. And you can take the seed from that fruit and you can go plant other plants. But you're not going to grow anything if you have 10 plants and you're only giving it a tenth of the gallon of water. None of them are ever going to grow. So look at, look at modeling as putting you in the driver's seat. Acting's in the back seat. Modeling is going to drive you on to set where the model you gets out the back seat and walks on stage. Facts. Yeah, that's a nice way to look at it. Was that, yeah. that from a Madea play or that was actually from Tyler Perry? No, no, no. That's Ty no, Tyler <laughs> Perry. So Tyler Perry used to do this thing back in the day. He don't do it no more. Um, where he used to give these motivational speeches every Friday. It would be some personal story about his life. Um. And it's, on, it's still on his YouTube page. And he used to, like, do these, like, Friday things. And one of that, that story stuck with me because I, too, am a serial entrepreneur. And I have a million ideas. I have a million things I want to do, like, in this world. Like, one of them is very close to modeling. Like, I have a million things. I'm always, like, trying to do 100 things. And my whole life I've been trying to do 100 things because I thought 100 things is how you get to success not realizing that all I'm doing is spreading myself way too thin and never getting any results. Right. So when that came out, that really centered me. That's how I, I landed on Excel tribe actually, because of that, that statement, I landed on Excel tribe and I was like, I'm going to do this until Excel tribe blows up. And then I can use the revenue to, to do the shit that I like the other things that I'm passionate about, you know, that are connected to Excel tribe, but, there's tons of other things. Like personally, like I don't know that many people know, like Exo Tribe is a magazine. I would love to do a monthly issue. It's just I can't do that with me. It's just me. Yeah. Um, right now. And it's it's hard to like 
focus on the website, do a magazine, grow Instagram, grow TikTok. Like I, I, I so I've decided I'm just going to focus on the site and then we'll, 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 we'll grow the other things, you know, when the money comes. So I say that to say you on the right path. I mean, you in the right industry, you're the right people are seeing you all the people that do modeling, they do acting too. So you in the right place, the right people going to see you. Yes. <laughs> um, now I would say though, you should be doing skits on Instagram to really show your acting ability. See, that's what everybody says. Or everybody, oh, you're so because it's the easiest way to carry out what you're looking to do. It's like you. I mean, it's it's almost like creating a modeling portfolio, but an acting one. It is. I think the issue, not even an issue, but like I'm situational, funny. Like things happen to me, and I feel like when it be turns into like scripted funny or my own script, it's like that ain't really funny. You know, so it's just like I do have to work on that and play around with it. I actually just ordered like a, a camera. Um, it should be here like any second, actually. Um, just what kind of camera around. did you get? They got me to get the Sony ZVE. I know that's what everybody's getting, but it was the okay. It was the cheaper one for right now. I wouldn't go bad, you know. Too and that's fine. Sony's so, Sony's pretty good. Yeah, I saw your face for it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a Sony guy, so it's just. Sony was not said. In my price, um, I'm I'm an icon guy through and through, but Sony's icon. Sony's a great piece of glass. I don't know if I like their lenses, but they're a great piece of glass, and you can't go wrong with Sony. I mean, it's gonna give you the quality you're looking for. The next one will be a Nike. Um, for people to see your talent, because you're very funny, by the way. Like, I was in stitches the whole time. I appreciate that. I don't think that was situational because situational would have been a one-off. Like you were telling joke after joke after joke. And then, then you and Cam together are like, <laughs> matter of fact, I should have just had the camera on. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. Yeah. Maybe the thing is, like you said, the scripted, it, don't make it scripted. Just turn the camera on and do what no. you would normally do. And then cut out the parts that you don't like. And I mean, y'all were really funny together. Appreciate that. Yeah. So that is the plan. So just to try to keep the camera rolling as much as I can and then just go from there and, you know, build content. Cause even like some of my followers, like you ain't posted in like two weeks and then crazy enough. I'm like, man, I ain't think, you know, like y'all cared. It's like, why are we following you for it? I was like, you know what? You're right. So I'll try to make more content. So I, I really give a lot of credit to content creators and people like that, because it's not just, Oh, I just post when I want, man. It's a schedule. You got to think of the yeah. content. And I like, I haven't even like fully, you know, dived into that world. So I was like, man, that's, this is that. I think that comes later. Honestly, what you're talking about is perfecting the craft. That's not when you start. P anybody who starts content creation, you literally start by just posting shit, literally. And then. As you go along, you find your way and then you find the structure that works for your way. Yeah. So some people do skits that are written out, like they write them out like a, like a play or a movie, and then they act out the scenes. Some people literally just, the camera's on 24 seven. When they get to the, the editing floor, that's when they figure out what's funny. We're going to keep this. We're going to get rid of this. Not everybody does it that way. And what, what you're talking about is level two. So I, that's what I like to tell people when it comes to creating content. Don't think too hard. There's actually a, a reel that's going around where the guy says everybody's trying to make content instead of just being the content. Yeah. You are the content. Like the the technicality of it comes later. Like, you mean, when I first started creating content, like it was trash. Like, straight trash i mean i was recording half the time you couldn't even see my whole face because the phone was up to the ceiling but it, it it wasn't i was just making content and then after a while you're like okay i think my lane is like right now i feel like my lane is doing more like structured creative content so it's like i'm doing like uh i like to call it like a fashion series where i'm doing getting readies with me i'm doing unboxing and then modeling the clothes right that's my thing now but when i first started i didn't have a thing i was doing everything because you gotta you literally gotta throw everything to the wall and figure out what sticks 
and then you go from there. So don't make it hard. Just turn on the camera and, go. and figure out what you like after. Facts. That's the plan. Yeah. That's the plan. Okay. So what I want to know is, so you've been a mo- officially a model for three years now, mm. which actually I did not know. So that's a long periodically time. I feel like two. Right? We, if we if we don't count the oh, uh, you want to skip twenty twenty? Yeah, we let's skip twenty twenty. That was a year. Um, I mean, okay, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> two, 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 a uh, three invisible two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. Um. Or three invisible one actually, but what's one thing you wish you knew at the beginning of modeling that you're just now finding out? Like, what's one of those things? My portfolio. So the biggest thing that I learned. Um, so one thing that I did when I was at Nike um, or any shoot where I'm working with somebody else is I introduce myself. You know, I get to know the the, the models and I ask questions. You know, it's. I was about to say it's not a guide or a handbook for this. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it's it's so much stuff that I create one. Right, create one. It's so much stuff I didn't know as a new model that I'm learning through asking. For example, my portfolio. So with me, I'm like, you know, I have Nike, I have Coles, I have Fenty. The one time I did, you know, Columbia or Dickies, you know, I'll just pull the pictures from the website and just this is my portfolio. And so when I'm reaching out to these brands. And, or these agencies, um, and it's like, hey, you know, I'm trying to, you know, get more exposure. I need, you know, an agent in this area. And they say, oh, well, you just don't have the look. You're just not what we're looking for at the time. And, you know, it's a humbling experience, but also it's just like, what do you mean I don't have the look? If Nike and Fenty and so-and-so says I have the look, who are you working with that says I don't? But at the same time, when I'm sitting in my portfolio, it's just pictures off the website. You know, I don't have pictures of me you know, in suits walking down the street or pictures of me in the wilderness or at the beach and stuff like that. I just have pictures that they can pull from the internet. And I think that that was one of my biggest mistakes is not knowing that or not asking that. So if you say, hey, do you have a portfolio? Yeah, but it's like, no, this is just like pictures I can get off Google. Like, where's your test shots? Where's your head shots? Where's you in these type of outfits? So now that I know that, I feel like I'm so far behind the game with things like that. Or I feel like when I did reach out to these bigger agencies in like New York where fashion is really big, they would have took a second look or at least evaluated it because if they work for work with Banana Republic or, or Men's Warehouse or, you know, these other places, but they just see me in basketball shorts from a Nike website, that doesn't really make myself marketable, right? So now so, got it. You know, now I know I need to have these suits or be in this environment. So when they see me, they can envision me in the clothes or the brands that they work with. So that is something that I wish I knew out the gate because I would have been, I personally think I would have been so much further ahead um, as a model than I am now. I still feel like I'm, I'm, I'm at a good pace, but I feel like I could have been that much further. So now, you know, I'm trying to find content creators or photographers, stylists, and things like that, just so I can start building my book. Oh, I saw some pictures coming. I'm, I I feel like they're going to be good. You're, you were in a blue suit. Oh, we can't, yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about that. Mm-hmm. See, Cam mm-hmm. is a good friend, but Cam is also like a mentor. Even with Brandon sometimes, like Cam was like, no, this is what they're looking for. This is, and you know, Cam is blunt too. So we're like, this is exactly what you're doing wrong, right? Cam is very blunt, my God. Yeah. <laughs> but you need that in a friend because it's like, oh, you're right. I didn't know that. So now let's work with it. Because every time I talk to him, he's like, yeah, I'm about to do this shoot or, you know, let's do this shoot. And it's like, bro, no. But now when I look at his book of business or I look at his portfolio, you know, you see him in different type of environments. It's like, okay, this is the difference between him as a model and me as a model. So this is what I need to learn how to do or get out of my com- comfort zone or stop being lazy and do this more. So when these bigger brands like Gucci or whatever, when they actually jump on board with the big and tall train, I'll be ready. Right. They're not just looking at, yep. you know, plaid shirts for Father's Day from Coles or something like that. They'll see me. Yep. Stuff that they can advertise. So they already need to see you as a high fashion. Facts. But if I don't. Have- yeah. Cam does a very good job at marketing himself that way. Good. I see. I see what you're saying. Um. OK. Well, that's only only difference then in that arena is you setting up the time and getting the photos taken because I, I you have the ability to do everything 
thank you. I just need to. Yeah. Yeah. So. So just hone in on that a little bit, get you some dope photos and start submitting yourself to the people that, that can like push you in that direction. But there's no reason in two to three years, like you're not on a billboard on Times Square wearing Gucci. No, no reason. And that's, that's what I'm praying for. And that's why all this year is like, you know, just stack your bread, you know, build these connections with these people and just, you know, put your best foot forward for the rest of 2022. So like you said, when that comes, I have everything set. Here you go. This is me, um, the full me, right? So not just, you know, the G string picture or, you know, something like that, you know, you, you see me in every element. So, yep, you can do everything. Okay. Um, well, tell the people where they can follow you if they're not already following you. I mean, they might be hiding under the rocks, right. which. So, if you're not following me yet, follow me on Instagram at C Q U E underscore smooth. Um, you just got that it was CQ like GQ. So, hopefully, y'all catch the reference. But yeah, so. Um... <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Talk me a minute. All right. But yeah. It's actually a double entendre, technically. What you mean? CQ, like GQ, but CQ as in your... What you call? Your, your um, a fraternity? Yeah, that's why it's the QUE instead of just the Q. See? You? I understand. So it's a double entendre. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Come on. Follow me. I, I'm... You smart actor? You see me? I'm a little educated, man. Yeah. <laughs> I see you. I see you. You got you got it both. Try. All right, y'all. Well, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Excel Trident Podcast. Man, until next time. Peace out, motherfuckers.